Let's see how we can use the ArcGIS Python API using Jupyter Notebook, this browser-based Python console where I can type in my code and the results are shown interactively in the browser. To use the WebGIS, we create a GIS object. The GIS represents ArcGIS Online or your portal if you specify its URL and login credentials. This object lets me manage my GIS content, data stores, users and groups, and it also has a map widget for use within the notebook to see the content of my GIS and the results of my analysis. I'm searching my GIS for content and displaying each item that's returned. The matching web maps and web layers are displayed using a rich representation that looks like the search results from ArcGIS Online. Let's add the last result to our map and we do that by calling map.addLayer and passing in that layer. We scroll up to see and sure enough the map has been updated with the layer. This Pythonic GIS API is modular and super easy to use and understand. The GIS module is the most important and it lets you manage your GIS users, groups and content. The modules in green such as the features, raster and network module include the classes and geoprocessing tools for working with the various geographic datasets in the GIS. The modules in blue provide additional functionality for your workflows and those in orange are for visualization. They include the map widget we just saw for visualizing maps and layers. Let's see how an administrator can use this API to set up a portal with users from the CSV file, add it to the appropriate groups and with content that's ready to go. We can specify where the setup files are, which license files to use and so on and use Chef, an IT automation tool to install and configure this portal. Let's kick off the scripts to populate the portal with users, groups and content. The create groups script creates the groups listed in the CSV file. The create users script creates users and adds them to those groups. And finally, the publish content script publishes web layers and creates web maps using those layers. It's that easy. The scripts are done adding users and groups and are working on the content. Soon we'll have a portal that's ready to go and all we had to do was run a couple of scripts. This API also enables analysts to use big data and answer questions such as whether the number of hurricanes or their duration increased during a time period. They can register their big data file shares with the GeoAnalytics data stores, which introspects this data and makes it available for analysis. Here I'm calling the GeoAnalytics reconstruct tracks tool to create tracks for the hurricanes using their serial number field and the geodesic method as the hurricanes span a large geographic area. The results are returned using a time aware layer that can be added to a map for visualization or queried using Python libraries such as pandas. We see that 568 hurricane tracks were created from this huge data set as well as their geographic distribution. Coming back to the question the analyst started out with, by combining ArcGIS with the data science libraries in Python and fitting a trend line, it's clear that the number of hurricanes did increase during that period. What about their duration? By doing a scatter plot analysis and using some linear regression, we get the answer. Geoanalytics can be used for distributed analysis of large feature datasets. Let's now see how we can use raster analytics for distributed analysis of large raster datasets. Here I'm using this multispectral Landsat imagery layer from the Living Atlas and cycling through its configured raster functions that can change its visualization at display resolution in real time. We can compose our own raster functions as well, such as this one for extracting bands and apply that to the imagery layer using on-the-fly image processing. With raster analytics, we can now use distributed processing of raster datasets and create persisted information products that apply a raster function across the entire extent of an imagery layer at source resolution. Here, I'm extracting out the 752 band combination and creating a persisted raster product that makes it easy to visualize forest fires. By comparing the natural color image with the false color image from the result layer, we can see where the burn scars are and where the active fires are in this tabbed interface. 
The ArcGIS Python API makes it very easy to script and automate administration, analysis, and content publishing tasks such as these.